In this video here, I am going to be talking to you guys about set builder notation, which is a notation that uses symbols to define a set in terms of properties of the members of the set. And so here we have kind of a basic foundation on how you would write a set notation. So let's go through it. Um, so you can see that there are braces here, and we've talked about this before, that braces help us represent a set. So that's how we can represent a set. So I'm gonna put a little arrow here. So this is saying that the set um, X, so X is in here. So this X is basically saying all of the real number of X. And then this line here, you can think of it as saying such that. And when I put this together, it's going to make a sentence, which will explain what this notation means. And last but not least, uh, this inside here is really the, um, the key part to what we need to know. So inside you have an inequality, x is less than b, um, and b is just any num number. So let's write that in words. So x is less than b which is some sort of number. And so we call this specifically the conditional statement. And what that conditional statement tells us is what does exactly this set represent? So if I were to read this out loud, this notation says, the set all of real numbers for x such that x is less than b, which is some number. So to summarize, this set here is saying that um, the x here represents only x values that are less than b, whatever that number is. So in this case, we have some actual defined numbers that we've squeezed in. And what we have to do is take the set builder notation and transform it into a... Um, uh, an interval notation. So interval notation is using those brackets and parentheses. So when you're translating a set builder notation into an interval notation, it's very similar with taking like a inequality. So notice that this here is an inequality and we can uh, change it into an interval notation by seeing what it looks like on a graph. So what I like to do first is always draw a graph because I can understand or visualize um, the number line a little bit better when I do that. So here, this inequality says that x cannot equal 5. So the number that I'm working with is 5. And on the ends, I'll just put in negative infinity and positive infinity. And so if it can't equal 5, then guess what? We're going to have to use an open circle because it can't touch 5 because it can't equal it. But it, it just says that it can't equal 5. So that means it can still equal any other number. It can still be 6. It can still be 100. It can still be negative 6 or negative 100. So I can shade in all the other parts of the line except when it is 5. So when I shade in the parts, I can represent each shaded region with an interval. Like this here goes from negative infinity to 5. So I'm going to represent that with a interval. Now, infinities, we always use a parenthesis, and this 5, I need a parenthesis because it's an open circle. And then I have another interval here, so I have to represent that from 5 to positive infinity. And remember, we always write the smallest number first and then the bigger number. And I also have to use parentheses here because I have an infinity sign. Now, when you have two intervals, you will need to join them using a U, and that U stands for union. And it's only used when you have more than one interval. So in this case, that is our situation here. So this here is my interval notation. Let's try another one here. So again, we have some intervals going on and we have an or statement, but that's just saying that we have uh, these both these intervals that we have to draw. So again, I like to start off with a number line. It helps me visualize. And I notice that the numbers that I'm working with here is a negative two and a three. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot that. Remember, when you're plotting, you need to write the smallest number, which is the negative 2, on the far left side, and the biggest number here, which is 3, on the right side. 
And so notice with the negative two here, you have an inequality sign with a line underneath. So that means I need a closed circle. Whereas the three, I have an, um, not a line here. So I need an open circle on the three. Now, it says here that x is less than or equal to two. When you think of numbers that are less than or equal to two, uh, negative two, that's going to be like negative 10, negative 100, numbers that are on this side, right? So anything less than that number means you're shading to the left of it, right? So in this case, I have shaded this region right here. Whereas when you're looking at the three, this says x is greater than three. So if x is greater than three, you need numbers that are on the right side of three because these are numbers bigger than three. So now that I've shaded, I can clearly see my intervals, right? I can see that this here is going from negative infinity to negative two. So let's make an interval for that. That doesn't look very pretty, but that's an infinity. But for this two here, I'll need a bracket since there is a closed circle. This one will be from three to infinity, but I need parentheses since that was an open circle. And since there are also two intervals, I'm going to join them with a U. Um, and that is it. That is my final answer because I'm just trying to write this in interval notation. And that's it, guys. So if you guys want to practice some more problems, there are some more problems, practice problems on this um, worksheet. So feel free to try some more. And that's it for this video. Bye, guys.